If you are looking over your boat's lower unit and you see something like this, where the paint is chipping up and it looks like it's got bubbles coming up under the paint, you most likely are looking at galvanic corrosion and it could end up costing you a ton of money to fix it if you let it go for too long. There are many different types of corrosion that can be seen on a boat. Anytime you take a battery or electricity, an engine, and drop them into a body of water and allow that electricity to flow throughout the boat and the engine, we are going to see some complications and different adverse effects and we will see them pretty quickly. Now we're all used to dealing with rust and the closer you get to the water, the worse it gets. Especially when we up the stakes and talk about being close to warm salt water. A place where we like to say that even plastic could rust. But when it comes to talking about anodes and what they do for your boat, most of us really don't care about the chemical process of iron breaking down or the chemical breakdown of a metal. No, all we really care about is how it affects us in our own boat and what we can do to enhance our own boating experience with less problems. So in order to understand how we can lessen these problems and catch them early, we'll need to know a couple of different things. We're dealing with a couple of different issues when it comes to anodes, what they do, and corrosion on the boat. The first thing is that we are dealing with what is called an electrochemical corrosion. And all this means is that from the minute a metal is made, it is starting to chemically deteriorate. Or what you can visually see, rust. Which is why the paint on the engine and any other metal that is on the boat for that matter is so important. Because the paint helps to slow down this chemical process. Because this process is sped up when it's exposed to air. So the paint helps to protect the metal. And wax will give you the same type of protection just only until the wax wears off. But then we have what is called galvanic corrosion. And what this means is that when it comes to your boat and the engine, it's made up of multiple dissimilar metals or different kinds of metals that are all touching each other and then dunked into water which creates this chemical breakdown where one of the metals is corroding away and the other metal isn't. There are many different metals available which we can see when they are all compared on a chart. But some metals are going to be what are called more active than others, which are going to be called more noble or less active. So when we list them all out based on how active they are, we can better see where some metals are going to be either higher or lower on this list, letting us know which metal is going to corrode first. When we take two of these metals from the list and put them together, the more active metal is going to corrode before the more noble metal. Then when we put those two different metals in a bucket of water, the current flow of the metals trying to corrode happens at a much faster rate. It's almost like they create electricity when dunked in the water. Then it gets even worse when we actually do start sending electricity through these metals. And when it comes back to talking about the boat, this more active metal is going to be our anode. And our less active metal is going to be our lower unit, the engine bracket, the bolts holding the lower unit on, the drain plug bolts, the propellers, the bolts holding the engine on, and any other metal that is found on the boat. Most of these items are made out of aluminum or stainless steel and most of them are also connected physically, but also connected through the electrical ground circuit that is in the boat, which allows electricity to flow through these items. So not only do we have this galvanic corrosion happening, but then we move into another type of corrosion that is called electrolytic or most commonly referred to as stray current, where electrical currents are trying to get back to ground and they will find the easiest path to it, no matter where that is, your engine bracket, the lower unit, a through hole fitting, bolts or any other thing that gives it the easiest path back to ground. So if say your underwater lights are leaking electricity into the water, then that voltage is going to be going to the quickest and easiest way it can find in order to get back to the battery in the boat, which is where the anodes come into play because these are going to be what helps lessen the damage when it comes to any of these different situations that you may find happening on your boat. All boats have what is called a hull potential which is basically how corrosive or neutral the boat and all the metal on the boat's hull are that are in the water. Figuring out the hull potential is how you are going to be able to put the right amount of anodes on the boat in order to get the best protection against the different kinds of corrosion you can find. For a practical application of this issue, we are going to be using this boat here that has this exact issue going on, 
where when we look at the lower units, you can see that the paint is bowling up and chipping away because of a corrosive issue. Now we are going to be using a corrosion reference electrode in order to figure out the hole potential and fix the issue. This is one of those really great tools to have that you really only use a handful of times depending on what you do. Because what this does is it basically allows you to read the current that's in the water. So if we put this into the water back here in between the engines, then we can take it and plug it into our multimeter and hook up our positive lead from the meter to the boat's ground circuit. That will allow the meter to show any voltage that is flowing in the water. We got this one here from BoatSinks.com and they come with a really great little booklet that shows you step by step how to test your boat and hull and what the readings mean. When looking at what we've got going on with this boat, as it stands right now without the engines in the water, we've got about negative 1000 millivolts, which is what we should have. But then when we trim the engines down into the water, we've got anywhere from negative 600 to negative 800 millivolts, which means that the boat is way underprotected when it comes to the anodes. And anodes being what many people like to call zincs but zincs are really just a type of metal that anodes can be made out of because you can get other types of metal anodes like magnesium or aluminum ones which will work better in different environments in most cases the zinc anode is going to be the best choice but that will depend on where you live and what the water is like where you are because with the engines in the water we really want to see a reading of negative 950 to negative 1100 millivolts for this boat that is a fiberglass hull with outboards so what we need to do is check the anodes that are on the engines and the boat to make sure that they are working properly this can be done by a couple of different ways first by looking at them and seeing how deteriorated they are and also checking them with a meter to make sure that they are allowing current to flow through them many times they will build up a layer on top of them that doesn't allow current to flow through them when you compare these old anodes with some new ones the new anodes have straight continuity across the anode where the old one has massive amounts of resistance that is stopping the current flow then the other method is going to be by weight anodes can deteriorate from the inside out and become hollow which will also make them useless on the boat so if they have lost 50% of their weight, then you can go ahead and toss them out. Or if they have lost two thirds of their size or have lost continuity across them, you can get rid of them too. Some people like to just clean them up, but that just depends on how bad the anode is and how expensive they are as well. You can use muriatic acid or a wire wheel or other methods to clean them, but those are the main ways of checking the anodes. This is all important to understand because when we go back to talking about putting the two different types of metals together, they create that current. And the purpose of the anode, or basically what the anode does, is that because it is a more active type of metal than what most of the other metals use to build the engines are made out of, the anode neutralizes the whole potential or pretty much it's a metal that is used as a sacrifice to absorb the current flow and be the metal that gets eaten up rather than the metal that makes up your engine. It's the same thing as what Jesus Christ has done for us. So after we have changed out all of the anodes on the engine and put the boat back in the water, you can see that the hull potential has come up to about 1060 or 70 millivolts, which is exactly where we want the hull potential to be. 